Now, you would think that connecting something to a TV would be pretty simple nowadays. You know, you might start by thinking, okay, well, you know, just go ahead and, you know, connect whatever it is to the HDMI ports on the back of the TV and you're all set to go. And you would usually be correct in thinking that. Uh, however, they have decided to give you one remote which does not go specifically to the TV in your room. It is specifically programmed for this set-top box that they've bolted to the back of the furniture here. So that makes sense, right? Especially when you see set-top box has its own HDMI inputs and they are labeled as inputs if you go around the back and you look at the printing on the other side here. So those kind of work if you plug something like the switch in while the TV is on, you will actually be able to see this menu kind of behind the actual menu delivered by the set-top box, if that makes sense. Like, you'll see what you have here for the Switch, except all of your choices for on-demand and hotel information and travel and all that will be overlaid on it. And there's no way that we were able to find to say, hey, you know, just show me what's on the HDMI input, for example. What you have to do is uh, the set-top box back here essentially controls the TV entirely through this uh, serial port that's on the back. And that's kind of common, except it basically turns the TV into the equivalent of like a computer monitor where all of the inputs from the remote, if they go to the TV, are being handled through this serial port rather than the TV accepting the input directly. So what you have to do is unplug both the TV and the set-top box from the power back here. Then, once they're both unplugged, you go ahead and you plug the TV back in and at this point, what I assume is happening is that there is no data being received into the serial port by the TV from the set-top box. Once that happens, the TV starts to work like a standalone TV. At that point, you now have a TV that will only display whatever is plugged into HDMI 1 on the back here. Uh, and, oh, every time you turn it on now, the volume is at 100, so that's fun to deal with. Uh, one other thing, Kayla made a good point about this. We were hoping that we would just be able to use buttons on the bottom of the TV. This is an LG, so I thought maybe it was one of the models where the power button under the logo here is actually a joystick. That's not the case, and there are absolutely no buttons on this TV. Uh, so looking at the serial port on the back, I mean, it's pretty clear that this TV is pretty much meant for this specific application, but they uh, really don't give you any options other than tricking it into doing what you want. So <laughs> it's a very roundabout way of saying it's not as bad as it could be, but why on earth is it so complicated?